We're finished with cycle three. We should have some semblance of a level, though I imagine people will be iterating throughout the day, especially as you know, we get Robbie to start moving around and, and, and uh, you know, kind of experiencing, and, exploring more of the level. We'll and add when we to have it and spikes, traps, all yeah, sorts spikes of cool stuff. Yeah, spikes and other things to do and, and whatnot. Uh, and, and Mike's pointing at himself and, and Mike's. Uh, and uh, yeah, so, okay, so let's, let's move on here. So we're gonna start now. So this is gonna be a two-parter. We're gonna do one part right now and then another part after the break. We're gonna start building the player. So what we're going to do here, we've got Robbie down here, and Robbie is just being all, all Robbie-like with that stupid grin on his face, always has. And uh, so we're going to start adding some stuff to him. Because right now he's just a, a, a sprite, doesn't do anything, doesn't move, doesn't whatever. And so, you know, obviously we need to start preparing this character. The first thing I'm going to do, so I've got Robbie selected here. I'm going to go over to my inspector where I see, hey, there's Robbie. And I'm going to look that it, there's a layer here. And, uh, you know, right now it's default and that's fine, but we're going to need Robbie to have a specific layer later. So I'm just going to click the layer drop down and I'm going to select player because we want Robbie to be on the player layer uh, because eventually he's going to need to interact with stuff and it's going to say, hey, are you the player? And that's how we're going to use, uh, we're going to define and determine that. So the next thing I need to do is I need Robbie to be a physical entity. It's got to be able to jump, push, pull, have physics applied. And in Unity, in order to have physics applied, to have the physics engine pay attention, it needs a rigid body. This is a 2D game, so we are going to add a 2D rigid body. So with Robbie selected, I'm going to click Add Component. And I'm going to go to Physics 2D, not regular physics, Physics 2D. And I'm going to add a rigid body 2D. And so that's going to add uh, this rigid body component here. And for the most part, it's OK, but there's a few things we want to switch. Now, the colliders tend to be fairly big. Robbie tends to be fairly big, relatively. And so I don't really need continuous coll collision detection. However, uh, there are parts where maybe I might be falling fast, or I might add some small traps, or I just really want my, my collision to be very accurate, right? Platformers are all about very accurate inputs, very accurate collision, because a lot of times you have a very small margin of error, and you die. And you really don't want your players getting frustrated because you're just not as accurate as you could be. So I'm going to set my collision detection to be continuous, right? It's a little less performant, but it's going to give me much higher accuracy in my collision detection, which to me is very important in this game. The other thing is I'm going to look where it says interpolate. Right? Interpolate is how it's figuring out how this character is moving. Without interpolation, right now you can see it's set to none, my character might, might fall, and when it lands on a platform, might move into the platform a little bit and then bounce back on top. Well, I don't want that to happen, because that's going to cause my camera to kind of do that, and it's going to be kind of a jarring experience, and it's going to cause some other collision detection issues where the character could, in theory, get kind of stuck or whatever. So I don't want to do any of that. So for interpolate, I'm going to set this to Interpolate. So the, the value of interpolate will be interpolate, where I'm not going to allow the character really to overpenetrate collider and stuff like that. When he lands, he'll land on the collider, because um, it's going to use interpolation to determine that. So that's a rigid body, and that's great. And if I were to say just hit play now, my Robbie character just uh, goes see ya, right? Because it's a physical entity now, which means it's got uh, gravity and all that stuff. However, uh, it doesn't have any physical constraints. There's no boundary to it. So I'm going to add one. So again, with Robbie selected, I'm going to click Add Component, Physics 2D, and Box Collider 2D. And I need to then set up some values. So we can see this Box Collider gets added around Robbie. It's obviously way too big. And something that you know, is little known with Unity, default physics, default physical material on our colliders has about 40% friction. About 40% friction on the default collider. That's fine. You know, the character's feet will have some friction on the ground. The problem is if you jump into a wall, you'll stick to the wall. Because 40% friction while you're going really fast is a lot. And you basically just stick like Velcro to the wall. And you don't want that. You want them to slide off the wall. So we're going to apply a physics material that's going to make our character slippery, right? So they won't stick to walls. Um, and we're going to control how they move a little bit differently. So where it says material for my box collider 2D, I'm just going to click my circle selector here. And the little window is going to pop open. And I only, uh, that was pop up and pop open, kind of mixed together to hear me say pop open. Uh, we only have one physics material here, uh, 2D. It's called Teflon, because Teflon is super nonstick. Uh, and if I click on it here, we'll see that all I'm doing for Teflon is I'm saying I have zero friction, zero bounciness. That's all it does. And so now Robbie's collider has Teflon applied, so they're not going to stick to any surfaces. And I also want to adjust the size of this. So I could just uh, kind of click and drag to sort of move these values around to sort of figure out what the, the right amount is. 
However, I happen to know the right amount. So for my offset, I'm going to set this to 0.9 uh, for my Y offset. For my size, I'm going to say 0.8 wide. So we see here it uh, cleans that up a little bit. And for my height, it's going to be 1.8. And so now if I look, we can see that collider fits nice and easily around Robbie there. Um, his hair sticks out a little bit, but it's magical hair, so it, it's okay. It'll just go through traps. It's not a problem. Uh, and we also have the collider a little bit in front of Robbie, because when Robbie runs, he leans forward a little bit. So basically, while he's moving, which is generally where he'll hit by traps, he's going to fit more readily into this collider. And it's a simple collider. We could do something much more complex, but really, it's unnecessary. This is a nice even collider. It's about the size of one block unit, which allows you to space your jumps and your timing and everything, and it all works really well. So this seems to be about ready. If I were to hit play right now, uh, you'd see my character now is going to fall and land on the ground instead of fall through it, which is great. However, there's one more thing we need to do that you might not notice. If I were to take Robbie and just say, move him up here, right, seems pretty reasonable, and I were to hit play, we have a bit of an issue. Uh, and that issue is that Robbie, burp, has a, a bit of a physics problem in that, you know, he just sort of wants to fall. And since he's coated in Teflon, he's just sliding all over the place, right? So one more thing we need to do here is I'm going to go ahead back to the rigid body 2D on Robbie. And I'm going to go down to where it says constraints. And I'm going to go down here to freeze rotation Z axis. Z axis is your steering wheel axis, right? I don't want Robbie to to fall like this. I want to freeze that rotation so he always stays upright and I'll control any of that rotation myself if I need to. Now by freezing that, if I hit play, you'll see that Robbie does not fall off the edge but stays just like that unless I, you know, move him off the edge in which case he again falls straight down and everything is good. All right, so that's this step. It's a pretty simple step where we're basically just setting up Robbie. So here's what you're going to do, just to refrain. You are going to click on Robbie in the hierarchy, and then with Robbie selected, you are going to come to the inspector here. First, you're going to set the layer to the player layer, and then you're going to add two components. You're going to add a rigid body 2D and a box collider 2D. You can do that by clicking Add Components, Physics 2D, and you've got box collider 2D and rigid body 2D. On the rigid body, you are going to set collision detection to continuous. You're going to set interpolate to interpolate. And under constraints, you're going to freeze the z-axis. On the box collider, you're going to apply the Teflon material. And then for the offset, you're going to set it to 0 0.9 or 0 and then 0 0.9. Uh, for, and then for size, you're going to set it to 0 0.8 and 1.8. And at that point, you will be good to go. Robbie should fall, land on the platforms. Be sure to save your scenes when you're done.